Hello everybody, welcome back to another 10 Minute Trains episode. I'm Eric and today we're going to look at something made by Hornby, which is quite unusual for me. I don't buy a lot of Hornby products, but it is this, the London Transport Sentinel by Hornby Railways. So let's get out of the box and get into it. So for those of you that are unaware, in the early 1970s, London Transport bought three Sentinels to use on their sort of engineering trains, if you like, to displace the pannier tanks that they used to use. So obviously this is depicting one of them, DL81. There was 81, 82, 83. And uh, I think if I remember, they were based at Neesden, Lilybridge and Ealing Broadway depots. Feel free to correct me if that's wrong. Um, I can't remember which one was which. However, this depicts 81 with its dumb iron buffers rather than proper sprung push buffers. Um, and it's quite a handsome looking thing. So I figured we'd get one for the collection. And it just so happens that Charlie from CDC Design happens to have just created the match wagon to go with it. This is because these Sentinels, by design, were actually too small to correctly operate London Transport's signalling system. So they instead decided to permanently couple a match wagon, which I believe was made from a redundant Q-stock bogey, to the Sentinel, and they ran with that up and down as required. So uh, you can often see one shunting about and doing little trip workings, but of course this was back in the day, way before my time. But anyway, let's get this out of the box and see what it looks like. So as you can see, it's the standard Hornby red box, as you'd expect for this day and age. And it comes in the usual ice cube packaging. Just try and prise it out of there. We don't care about the box. <laughs> so what we've got inside, the detailing bag is fairly small. <laughs> that's all that's there. But here is the loco. Again, who cares? <laughs> Right, so looking at that little detail bag, then what have we got? I want to get these out. So I did wonder if these were going to be a thing, but these are actually little sockets that go in the NEM pockets on the locomotive to give the impression of the old tube coupling that used to be fitted. So uh, that's a really nice little feature. You can see the sort of thing that it would have got on the bottom of this match wagon, the same sort of thing. But uh, yeah, that's a nice little thing to add in. So while we're here, let's chuck one of those in and see how it looks. Simple as pulling the NEM socket out. And I think the rubbing plate goes on the top. And there we go. That's pretty good. I'm quite pleased with that. I didn't expect that to come with the locomotive. I thought it would just be standard uh, flush end pieces. So that's a nice little touch by Hornby there. So here's the Sentinel then, now out of the box for the first time. And on first impressions, I think it's quite a smart little thing. I mean, it's got the pretty standard Hornby, fairly matte sort of paint finish. I believe that's generally because they use the same coloured plastic as they do for the paint. So it's got very light sort of paint on it. It's just a bit of a trademark Hornby sort of thing. It's something that's always bugged me a little bit with their sort of paint finishes. There's uh, never really a sheen to them if you look. However, other than that, it looks like it's fairly well finished. The uh, London Transport lettering is on there nicely. You can see there, there's no sort of imperfections really in the light. Talk about the other side, we'll have a good look. Yeah, I'm quite pleased with how that's applied. Obviously you've got nice clear glazing there where you can see the driving desk on the inside. A nice little cab light would uh, be a neat little thing for me to fit in there potentially. Um, but yeah, other than that, it's obviously quite a basic little locomotive. There's a nice little bit of detail on the grills. I like that they've picked out the radiator grills with the little red uh, sort of pinstriping. As said, you've got the dumb irons on the front end here, rather than buffers. And on the back, you actually don't have anything. That's because this end would have obviously had the match truck. So uh, that would be the reason for that. But yeah, you've got the coupling rods picked out in red. It does have all-wheel pickup. And uh, for the size of it, it's fairly heavy, to be honest. So I'm quite pleased with that. So I picked this up from AGR Model Railway Store in Leighton Buzzard. It wasn't too bad price-wise. It was a little under the RRP. So uh, I think it came in at around £100, maybe slightly under that. So if you're looking for one, I think they had a few more in stock. So it might be worth checking them out. But yeah, um, I suppose I should look at possibly DCC fitting this. I believe it's six pin decoder-wise. 
Uh, however, I might end up hardwiring one in because I want to fit sound. So I'll be playing a bit of a game of Tetris really on where to fit a speaker um, because the motor, I believe, is in the center there. So that doesn't leave a lot of space. We might be able to get a, a speaker in one end and then the decoder and a stay alive in the other because I would like to fit a stay alive being it's quite a short wheelbase loco. So I've just uh, changed the coupling to the other end so that it can couple up to my match truck now from CDC Design. And you can see they're gonna make quite a cool little pairing. So I think the initial idea is probably going to be to make use of these on my little Croxley tip diorama sort of area. Um, it will be semi sort of inspired by that. And of course the original Croxley tip was served by the London Transport pannier tanks and then later on the battery logos. And of course, because these were sort of a replacement for the pannier tanks, it semi fits the idea. So uh, I'll probably have it stationed down there and make some use of it. So uh, we might see it shunting some trains about in a future video. The only thing I am slightly disappointed about on this, um, and it's a shame because it's one of the good features, is the dumb irons and the lack of buffers at the rear. It would be nice if they were removable and you've got a set of proper, proper buffers that you could actually fit to the front and rear of the engine because in later years they did have buffers fitted. And uh, if you want to renumber this to, to one of the others, then you probably need buffers. Um, so when we travel behind DL83, which is from the Neen Valley Railway, it came over to the Epinonga Railway. That actually has full conventional buffers fitted. So I would have liked to replicate that model. However, for now, I'll be pleased with this one if I can get it running nice. So we'll have to come back and see what it's like when it's on the layout. So here we are then, ready for a test run on the layout. Now the main problem I've had with this is the cranks actually hit the webbing around the axle boxes. So you'll notice I've had to shave those down. So you might have to do the same if you experience the wheels locking up. Other than that, I've fitted a Locksound 4 Micro with a very large Lay's Stay Alive. If you're going DCC, I thoroughly recommend it. And uh, I've created a sound file for it. So without further ado, let's go and get it running. So let's do a quick slow speed test then. You can see the controller in the corner. I'll just go up to one. It's not very slow, is it? <laughs> and it's extremely erratic. And uh, this is just a symptom of cordless motors, really. You can iron it out with filling with the settings, but it's going to take me a long time. So there you go then, the Hornby 3 Axle Sentinel in London Transport livery. Would I recommend you buy one? Probably not, to be honest. It's not the best model in the world. However, for me, it's something that I needed for the layout. So obviously I've got to persevere with it. The motor settings are obviously something I can tweak. So I will play with that and hopefully I'll be able to come up with some sort of solution. If I do, um, and I remember, I will leave something in the description once I work it out. But as for now, that is it really. So uh, hopefully you enjoyed the video and stay tuned for the next one. And make sure you get yourself a stay alive.